everyone and welcome to Design Makeover, a show where you can watch Canva experts improve designs submitted by the community and hopefully learn a few tips and tricks along the way. My name is Leah and I'll be your host for today. I'm from Canva Design School. Today I am thrilled to welcome Jacob, one of our own Canva designers. So I'll let him introduce himself. It's great uh, of you to join us uh, this afternoon from Sydney at least. Uh, wherever it is you're joining from, my name is Jacob and I'm a brand designer at Canva. And our team is here to make Canva one of the most loved brands in the world. So today, uh, with our community submissions, we'll look at uh, applying the principles that we use in our own brand here to help improve some of our outstanding community submissions. And hopefully at the end of this webinar, you work walk away with tips on how to optimize your messaging for impact. So here at Canva, we're building a product that helps our users to design anything. And in our marketing to external audiences, you can see that our key message is always the most prominent detail. We only ever use visuals that help to emphasize that message. Uh, here you can see that that's achieved by showcasing some of our outstanding templates and our trademark gradient that you notice in the editor always shines through front and center. As well as that at Canva, uh, we also showcase a vibrant library of photography that puts our users first and always showcases their connection to the product. It aligns closely with our mission to empower the world to design. You might even notice that the uh, typography of our mission statement is crafted in hand-drawn type, and that complements the stylistic aesthetic of our logo. Lots of simple, uh, so simple ingredients, but you know, optimized for impact. And so let's break it down into three principles that we'll look at consistently across all our submissions today. Uh, the first is hierarchy. It's you know, making sure that our key message stands through first and uh, helps to capture uh, our desired audience's attention. How can refining hierarchy improve clear space and uh, make our designs sit comfortably? And then third is harmony between you know, text, imagery, color, all the elements and basic ingredients that we might add to a design, how do we sort of achieve harmony of messaging between all of them? And so uh, in our design circle, uh, we had three submissions that I've chosen to pick out. The first is uh, Hissin's uh, Lawn Care Flyer or business card. The second is Kate Polger's Mindfulness Posts. And the third is uh, Lana's Instagram post. So a couple of social posts for anyone out there who um, creates, uses Canva to design social media. We'll show you how to do some uh, useful things. And if you'd like to join any of these webinars coming up, make sure to visit de uh, designschool.canva.com slash events. So let's start off with our first design, uh, Sin's Lawn Care Flyer. Here I have what is set out on a business card dimension. And there's quite a lot of copy here, but we can see that uh, Hassin is really trying to sort of separate herself from her competitors by saying, this is lawn care you can trust. So in this format, I'm gonna look at how we can use out of the existing ingredients, uh, bring things out and sort of emphasize that key message and make sure that all our elements are in harmony with that. Um, and when I first looked at this uh, business card, what I noticed was we have some photography. We also have some illustration. So how can we sort of balance the use of those two things? I'm going to start, obviously, by taking out the key message here. And we'll pull it onto um, on its own on our canvas here. And then I'll look at you know, our sort of secondary information, which is what is the service? It's lawn maintenance. And how do I get in contact with uh, person providing the service. And because this is a business card, I'm gonna split this onto uh, two artboards. We have title lawn maintenance and the contact details here. So it's lawn care that you can trust. And as part of thinking about you know, trustworthiness, um, I'm gonna look at how we can make the design overall have a tone of voice that's friendly uh, because friendliness is part and parcel with trustworthiness. Um, so let's look at firstly, I guess, color balance. Um, 
you know, I want to inject a little bit of color that complements our rather friendly looking uh, illustration that the sin is used here. Let's see if I was to change this around to be dark green or the color of, you know, uh, a, a lawn of grass. And let's go into Canva's text panel and let's see if we can find a friendlier font. Now, something that I'm thinking of this front of my mind is that, you know, display fonts, um, which is a category within uh, Canva, often look very friendly, but they're something that we use for titles only because they stick out and they have a lot of personality. So, you know, when I search display, I have a wide range of options that I can search through, but I want to go one step further in particular um, because I've decided to pull out this illustration. I want to look for typography that complements that. I'm going to look for um, typeface that is round, that has round characteristics. Um, and one that I sort of had looked at earlier was the font uh, TT rounds. So some rounds here. I thought I had. There we go. Nice and bold and large. And you can see that because this is nice and round and quite bubbly, it has a character, an aesthetic characteristic that complements the uh, friendly sort of characteristics of the illustration. But what I want to do is another thing is I want to make sure that I manage my clear space, optimize the space on this business card. And I'm going to adjust, or what I have just done there is adjusted my line space just by optics, just by eye to sort of match the spacing in between letter. So the spacing in between, you know, the words such as lawn and care matches my line spacing in between lawn care you can trust. And that helps make this statement look sort of cohesive together. But it's probably uh, not enough on its own. Um, just to have this. So let's see if I can find a complementary illustration to sort of build out this little environment that I want for the first page of my business card. I'm gonna to go to my elements panel, which allows me to search for photos, graphics, videos, and audio. But I just wanna look at graphics for this in particular. I'm gonna look for something that, um, maybe a landscape with some grass to sort of sit underneath my lawnmower. And this looks nice and friendly. I'm gonna drop this. I'm going to use the position in my contextual panel to drop it behind the lawnmower. But I'm also going to make sure, because black isn't a very friendly color, I'm going to pull out a highlight color. And across my document, uh, Canva has some really sort of user-friendly features that allow me to pull out colors that have been used in photos that I've used in my design. I want it to be a nice light green. And you can see that light green is uh, used in this uh, illustration of the lawnmower. And that overall just helps us to um, keep our color palettes restrictive, you know, simplifies our design and as such makes it uh, a lot more effective. It allows our message to stand out first. So as well as that, I might look for just one sort of extra detail. Um, I like to use, you know, some sort of rough hand textured lines to make something look friendly. And there's a nice looking chalk flourish. Um, and we'll use it to sort of sit under one of our elements here, uh, under the lawn care you can trust. But let's sort of look at now our second. So we have a key feature uh, for the first side of the business card here. It's nice and illustrative. And the, illust the use of illustration here um, sort of uh, helps embody that friendliness that we're looking to capture. And our alignment of text is nice and sort of top to the left, and our illustration is anchored uh, in the bottom right here. In the second part of my business card, I noticed that it's in use photography. So on this side of the business card, I'm going to look at ways that the key feature on this side of the business card is a photograph that's relevant to our design. So back in my panel here, uh, I'm going to look for some uh, some photograph of someone mowing lawns. And through my editor, I'm going to separate to just photos here. I'm going to look, because my text is aligned to the left here, uh, I'm going to anchor my uh, secondary information here to 
the left as well. So I'm going to look for a photograph that allows me enough clear space for my text to be uh, readable here on the left and my image to still stand out on the right. Um, so I'm looking for lawnmower across to the right, or for example, I could use this and I can flip it horizontally. You have to be careful sometimes when you flip uh, an image though, that there's no text because if I flip, if you know, if there's text in my image and I flip that horizontally, someone's gonna be able to tell that you've um, basically edited that image and it doesn't look professional particularly. So luckily there's no text on this design and I can flip it horizontally. I want my uh, text to be consistent. I've used TT rounds on the um, previous page. So I'm gonna use TT rounds again. And because it's nice and dark green, I should be able to, again, use white text. Um, perhaps here though, my uh, text at the bottom. So I shouldn't have to use uh, a drop shadow underneath text, but if, for example, here, you can see these sort of white highlights on the grass are affecting our legibility. Uh, I might wanna add a drop shadow to the image it's super subtle, so I can't tell there actually is. I'm going to look for a border shadow that's close to the border of our image. Here's an interesting black one. I'm going to flip it vertical, anchor it to the bottom of the page, and make sure that it's behind my text. You can see there, um, in our contextual panel, there's nothing behind. I'm just going to tint the opacity so that I can read this text on white down the bottom here. But I can't necessarily, if I was to look at this image straight away, tell that there's a drop hat shadow there. So it's a really subtle way um, of adding or, or increasing the kind of legibility of our text without sort of uh, interfering or adding another obvious element to the design. So the front and back of my business card should be consistent. Um, I'm gonna look at the size of my text on the front page, which is about 23. Let's just make it nice and round, 24. I like nice round numbers. Bring it across. To make the backside of our business card read. Law and maintenance. Perhaps that is too big though. Um, let's scale it down. to 18, set it above our text. And what I'm using here is canvas margins. So in the top here, how I'm anchoring my, uh, my text to my design is sort of to the top left margin where it kind of automatically will snap. If I drag the design up to the top left, you'll see these pink guides come up. And on this secondary page, I uh, snap to the bottom left here. But so if I look now, I'm starting to build a really effective sort of front and backside business card. I've got this key graphic, you know, it's unique. It could be applied to a brand with a logo in the bottom left-hand corner if I wanted to. But it does, apart from the type, look a little bit disconnected with my second page. So perhaps I might wanna bring some of my illustration in there uh, to kind of carry across my friendly tone of voice here. So I'll bring this chalk line here. I've had a thought of, you know, something we all love in our garden, which is a bird. So let's see if I can find a, an illustration of a bird that matches this and kind of blends in well with the photography in the first and half, the first and second half of the business card. And I like this little, little pink guy here. It's kind of cute. He's kind of uses the same principles but it kind of adds a bit to my environment. It ties back in with a friendly tone of voice of my typography, but it still allows me to use an image. So you can see how I've looked at ways to build uh, harmony across these elements in the front and back side of the business card, but I've still used all the ingredients that Hassan has used here. And sort of when I, uh, here's the design that I pre-considered earlier. Um, let's just add that to the front and back, and that makes my design look nice and full. But there you go, it's two sides of the same business card. One is your tagline. So when I pick up my business card, what am I, you know, what is this service providing me? 
And the second half just tells me literally what that is, it gives me the information to get in touch with you. It helps me to create a, a really nice, effective business card. Let's say that my lawn care business, I then need, you know, uh, my employees to be able to create their own business card. What I then, how I would publish this document then would be as a template. And Canva makes that really easy under your share options. Yeah. Here we go. So Canva has made that even easier. Once upon a time, you used to be used to have to publish that in a folder with a template. But now when I go into my share settings, when I want to email this to someone or whatever that may be, it's as simple as copying this link. And if I send that link to somebody, they're not going to be able to edit the design that I've created, which is the, the source of truth, the mother temp template. They're always going to work from a copy and that's going to help preserve the integrity of my brand. So just looking back on our sort of design maker over here, we looked at has all the ingredients that Hassan had provided us. We just looked at how can we sort of emphasize a brand message, which is lawn care you can trust. We looked to do that through friendliness, and then we created friendly, a harmonious sort of friendly image between our typography, our illustrations, and our photography, all the key ingredients that uh, Hassan had provided us. Let's look at then how we do that for something like a social post. And Kate Pulgo here has provided us with a, um, what I assume would be a mindfulness post just by the tone of voice. So let's see how we can create a design using the, the ingredients that Kate's provided us, which really clarifies the concept of mindfulness. And when Kate provided this uh, design file to us, I could see that she had used one of uh, Canva's best features, which is uh, background remover, one of the greatest sort of time-saving features we have within the app. But, and I, and this lady's expression as a photograph really sort of captures, uh, I think to me in the design already that this concept of freedom, this expression of freedom, but we can see that she's had the background removed. So I'm actually gonna go into the edit settings here and see if I can, this button up here gives me the ability to restore the original. So I can kind of see what this image looked like uh, previously. And you can see that she's sort of um, out in nature, you know, which to me, uh, if we look at the original message that Kate's provided, it's okay to rest so you can free your mind. I think that the environment actually sort of provides an element that supports our message here. So I wanna see how I can sort of keep her within her contextual background. Um, I'm gonna actually make a copy of this image, resize it, make sure it's aligned here. I'm gonna use background remover again to remove this lady uh, so that I can use her as a foreground element from the background. Uh, it'll just take a minute. But as you can see, now I've got this, uh, this photograph as a sort of foreground element that I can use and I can layer uh, text and images behind it, which is going to be really useful to sort of capture the expression of my key message. And if we look at the original post, um, I think the most important information or the information that's coming across with the most expression is this idea of free your mind. So I want to look at uh, ways that I can bring that to the forefront on this Instagram post because Instagram posts are small. So it's really important that um, the key message stands out. Let's type this out. I'll remove the drop shadow. And if I just apply this text and look at it right now, uh, I can see that we might have legibility issues. The background is a little bit bright. However, because I have removed uh, the person from and brought her into the foreground, I can now edit this image and edit the brightness, bring that down, add a little more contrast and a little more saturation. But it doesn't edit the uh, image of my model here uh, in the foreground. She stays nice and clear, but my, my text now stands out for my background. So 
now I want to create sort of harmony between the text and this idea of uh, mindfulness or freeing your mind. I want to look for text that captures those characteristics. And again, what I did is I went into Canva and I typed display in the text and I looked for text that uh, kind of had the characteristics of breathing. Uh, and that led me to find one of our pro fonts, Emblem of One. And within this font, you can see that there are gaps in between the um, sort of stems of the capital letters. And to me, that sort of uh, expresses breathing. And so I think I'm going to try and build uh, the rest of the components around this. But because I've also brought uh, my model to the foreground, I can treat my text as if it's a part of the background here, seamless sort of element. However, I do need a bit more space on the top, so I'm just going to quickly crop this a bit better, bring this up so that it's completely legible. But there was secondary text here. There was a time and a date, and there was also a, a bit of a call to action um, that I need to add to my design here. Uh, so let's see how I can add these elements back into my Instagram post so that they're nice and easy to read. I'm just going to line my text above my key message here. And what I was looking for with a second font, because I can't use this, because this font here is obviously display, it's not legible in smaller sizes, but I need a font that matches the characteristics of this kind of um, quite breathy display that I've got here. And I wanted something that kind of matched, matched the kind of tone of voice around a mindfulness retreat, just sort of what I, what I had in mind that perhaps Kate was thinking of. Um, and I actually looked in here again, I typed in serif. And I found a font called XR. XR Extra Bold. It allows me to take, it's a nice sort of, it's got a, enough characteristics that I can bring the font down in size, make sure it's centered. And there's an extra space here. Make sure that my spacing in between my lines of free your mind, sort of my letter spacing matches the letter spacing of my extra message here. And then I can bring my secondary information in front of my model here. So just using Canvas margins again, just drop her down. We'll add date time, Thursday, September 30th, 3 p.m. But you can see here that we've got some nice separation. We've got a key message which is top of our design, the first thing our eyes see. And it's sort of separated using our model and her expressive arms. And then we've got a date, you know, it's sitting in the foreground. And we understand that that's important information we need to take away. And we can do so at a glance uh, on Instagram or social media. There's one more thing I think I can do, uh, maybe I can add some more elements and a bit more color to perhaps add a bit more of a brand feel uh, and support a bit more harmony between my key messages. I'm gonna look for uh, a blur element in my graphics panel here. And this is a, oh no, that's not quite the right one. This here is a recolorable SVG. So as you can see, it's a circular gradient. I can add it to my design here um, because my model again is separated from the foreground. I can send it to the background and I can pick out colors from my photo, which kind of support this expression of free, breathing space for my mind or, or freedom, uh, relaxation to kind of add a nice little extra feature. And as you can see, those colors kind of hint to a brand. Um, let's say, you know, I wanna add one last sort of edge to my social media post here. Let's animate it. Let's look at ways I can animate my design. The Canva makes that really easy. If I click, just the background of my design here. Canva is gonna give me contextual options that allow me to animate all my elements. See, I can't choose breathe because that uh, then 
gives away my little secret within my design. No pan. So actually what I want to do is probably animate just the text only. And with Canva, if I was to click the element or if I was to click the text, it'll just allow me to animate that particular element. So let's just animate the text. I think this kind of, you know, her nature, breathe makes sense. So I'm gonna add this breathe animation. And I also have the option to extend the timing of that animation or default it's five seconds. I think maybe that's a bit, uh, bit too short. I'm gonna add it to seven seconds and then I'm gonna download it either as an MP4 or I can download it as a GIF as well. Two really easy formats that allow me to download something, upload it to Instagram with some motion. So there you have it. We've looked at how we can use all our elements within our design to kind of emphasize our key message and create harmony between all those elements. So our text, our sort of gradients that we've used all tie into this idea of relaxation, mindfulness, and freeing your mind. There's more harmony in our design. And therefore, a message uh, sings across to our audience. Uh, let's look at one more Instagram post. And Lana has submitted this uh, Instagram post here that is encouraging people to connect for feedback and answer questions. Now, I don't have too much context, but what I see <clears throat> as a viewer is someone who looks quite athletic. So I'm going to lean into that athletic tone of voice. I'm going to see how I can make this design look more uh, dy dynamic and lean into those attributes of kind of motion and so, sort of high impact here. So again, I'm going to take, I'm going to use Lana's uh, image here as the key feature in my design. I'm going to scale it up so that it, it sort of is the front and center most important component of this design. And I'm going to use that feature I, I love to use so much, background remover. Saves us all so many hours, uh, having to painstakingly defetch something. So my model for my Instagram post here now looks like she's floating and, and I can use, um, I guess, color that leans into this kind of high impact uh, pose that she's doing. So I've looked for quite a nice strong blue. Uh, it also kind of feels quite uh, sporty. And, but I wanna, so my, what I noticed about Lana's Instagram post originally is that her message comes in two parts. The first component of her message is let's connect. It's a call to action. Uh, the second is a call to action, which is quite longer and requires us to take uh, um, more time to read it. But let's connect immediately draws the attention from anyone else uh, who might be on social media looking to connect. But let's take that 50 idea of sort of splitting my message into two parts and see how we can get our design to support that. This time, I'm just gonna go into the elements panel and look at basic lines and shapes. I'm just looking for a dynamic shape that kind of supports the motion or the, the pose that my model's in um, so that I can split my design into two. And I'm gonna scroll down and have a look, see if I can find. And this sort of angled uh, rhombus here looks nice, allows me to scroll it up. I'm going to just use a shortcut command L and that, you know, any command that you use, there's like uh, C for circle or R for rectangle, but anything that you drop on your design immediately drops in the center. And I'm just going to use that as a quick guide to, to get this sort of angle that I've chosen here to align in the center of my design. And I'm going to send it behind my model, delete my line, and I'm going to look for a nice high contrast color that complements uh, blue, but is also nice and friendly. And uh, so let's have a look in our color palette here. And if we go to Aqua, we see that that's got a nice level of contrast. It's still complementary, but uh, it's quite bright, the blue. So I'm just going to bring it up in my uh, color palette here maybe add a little bit more blue so that it's a bit more brighter, a bit more modern, and it has lots of energy. The two colors here have lots of contrast 
and uh, quite vibrant, which helps support the energetic pose my models in. So now let's look at how I can sort of start to apply the message. I've got a half uh, within my design, two halves within my design <coughs> to apply my message to, but I think the typeface that we've chosen to use here can kind of be more dynamic and uh, more harmonious with our design. So let's have a look through our typefaces. And for this one, I looked in under uh, for a sans serif. It's so nice and clean and uh, modern to kind of lean into my color palette. And uh, the one that I sort of ended up landing on was Oswald. So it's nice and tall and strong. Uh, and that kind of suits the position that our model's in as well. And then I'm going to use curved text. So, you know, the, the uh, model for my Instagram pose is really the center piece of the design. So I'm gonna use our curved text, text effect, which is another great uh, feature within Canva. You basically, under any piece of te text, go to your effects panel and under our style, we have the option to curve and then control our radius. And as you can see, there's a circle there, which shows you um, the radius of your text. But what I want is a little bit more breathing space between the letters. It's not quite legible. They, they look quite tight, and quite snug together. So I go to my letter spacing. You can see that that's already out of it. But what does it look like if it's a bit more, about 100? And to me, that's starting to immediately look better. It's easier for me to read that message at a glance because there's more space within the letters. I'm gonna tilt the circle so that the sort of horizontal line along my L and my T here uh, align with the angled sort of uh, line down the middle here. I'm gonna put the text behind the model. Lastly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my secondary color, which is a high contrast to the blue um, so that my design only essentially is only going to use two colors. I'm going to apply Oswald to my body text as well. Make sure that it's in all caps, nice and consistent. If I make that then my dark blue here, curve my text, I just have to turn this the opposite way. So my, my curve sort of allows me to drag apart from the zero mark and the radius reverses. But I wanna make sure that my radius here of my circle, as you can see when I move it, matches to the outline of let's connect perfectly. Um, and probably my text needs to increase in size. So we'll just keep tweaking this until the text can align within the negative space here neatly in between my radius and the size of the text. I'll rotate it. Okay. And we'll increase it in size. And we'll just make sure that the text is nice and centered. So you can see that my let's connect message here and the use of uh, our um, wrapping text effects, as well as keeping everything centered, kind of uh, creates a nice sense of harmony across here. I might wanna add one more sort of like call to action to my design, just so that people sort of understand. And it's common to have, uh, I'm just gonna use the shortcut T, it's often common to reference a link in bio um, because you can't attach any kind of command to an Instagram post. Instagram post. So I want a nice clean sans serif. Um, so I'll search that again in our text panel. We just want something that's nice and neutral. It doesn't compete with the single font we've used for our design. Um, Let's just try to go up here. Nice, that's nice and light. 
to downsize it so that it's not too prominent. Yeah, it's probably a bit small there. But we might just give it a bit more negative space, shrinking this. And there we go, we have sort of a balance between our messaging here. Uh, lastly, I wanted to show you guys another pro feature that can great pro feature that Canva has, which is the ability to schedule any piece of social content uh, to go on your Instagram automatically with the content scheduler. I don't have a business Instagram, but uh, this video that I'll show you. So here's the before and after and how we've created more harmony in the design. And if I wanted to schedule that automatically for Instagram, I would use a handy pro feature, um, which is our content scheduler. And hopefully this video will play and just give you guys an idea of how that works. There you go. So as you can see that any day of the week, I can schedule my Instagram post, design it in Canva, uh, and attach that to any particular time of day. And that just allows sort of a seamless uh, workflow from Canva to your Instagram, allowing you to really focus on, you know, what, how to create engaging content, the most engaging content possible for your audience. So that kind of wraps up our three uh, key designs. I'll just sort of talk to them each quickly uh, again. So with our lawn care business card, we looked at how we can create a harmonious um, design or sort of with our ingredients that Hasim provided us and emphasized on trust. And the way we did that was through nice round corners in the typography, that kind of sort of helped uh, complement our chosen illustration that has been applied to our design. Uh, and then we looked at obviously how we can use that illustration to tie into a piece of photography so that our uh, business card reflects a brand um, and a tone of voice centered around trust. As well, hopefully, we've given a little bit more clear space, a little bit more hierarchy to a sin's most important message, which was lawn care that you can trust. Secondly, we had uh, Kate's mindfulness post. And here we looked at how we can get a type, typeface to really lean into our key message here. Uh, and then we looked at, if we're going to add a secondary typeface, it has to complement the characteristics of our first typeface. But then also, uh, how can we focus on the expression in the photography that uh, Kate had chosen to kind of really help emphasize this message of freeing our mind. And lastly was Lana's Instagram post. And here we looked at how our design can be really harmonious and emphasize this kind of dynamic position that our model's in um, to kind of drive a brand message and our colors, uh, our choice of typeface, all sort of helps kind of bring in and focus on the dynamic position of the model so that everything's nice and complementary, but also hopefully our message is more uh, prominent front and center. Our choice of typeface uh, kind of helps to build a bit of a brand tone and voice. Uh, so that wraps up our three design makeovers, guys. Uh, was there any questions there that um, I can help answer? For anybody no i think you did an awesome job at explaining everything um there's so much love in the chat for all the designs particularly everyone loved the curved text <laughs> which was a hit and also the blur i think you did on the second design nice yeah make sure you guys look get have a look through our svg library because we have lots of designers who spend lots of time sort of building those assets and making them really rich and also editable so that you can, you know, apply your sort of brand's uh, tone and tone of voice and feel to those things. So, yeah, I'm glad you guys enjoyed uh, some of those standout features. Uh, you should also go out, if you don't have Canva Pro, go and try it. Uh, it's free for 30 days um, if you sign up through uh, Canva Pro landing page. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. Yes, that is a great tip.
So, all right. Well, I think that wraps up our show for today, everyone. If you haven't already, make sure to join our Canva Design Circle Facebook group. I think we actually have over 170,000 members now. So it's huge and it's a great place to get feedback on your designs, hear about new feature rollouts, and just in general, get Canva tips and tricks. Thank you so much for attending Design Makeover. I hope you learned something and make sure to stay tuned for future episodes with our extremely talented design team here at Canva. Make sure to follow us on our Canva social channels for everything you need to know about design. So have a great day or evening wherever you are in the world, everyone. Bye.